I'm going to start off with some general advice, then I'll share some cougar attack stories, and then finally some specific advice and conclusions. First of all, don't run, jog, or mountain bike. When you are moving quickly like this, you already look like fleeing prey to any predator. This is why dogs like to chase bicyclists. Second of all, be aware of your surroundings. Look around frequently and make sure to look as far down the trail as you can. Bring multiple people with you and stay together. Having more people is crucial in both preventing and defending against cougar attacks. Be noisy. One of these stories involves a hiker surprising a cougar, which led to an attack. If you are talking loudly, for example, most cougars will avoid you. Also, don't be out in low light or darkness. If you avoid the times when cougars are active and hunting, you can avoid being prey. Keep children close by and pets on leashes. Children need you to protect them, and dogs and humans are more formidable when they are together than when they are separated. If you see signs of a cougar or smell a dead animal nearby, don't hang around that trail. Get out and leave a note at the trailhead to warn other people. Also, whenever you bend over or crouch, you look like prey to a cougar. If you have any pets or livestock, keep them in a fully enclosed area during the night, whether that's a kennel or a shed. If you do see a cougar, you need to maintain eye contact, be loud, and be aggressive. Andy Peterson was attacked while hiking. He surprised a 100 plus pound cougar that was eating a deer. It clamped its jaws over Andy's head and only let go when Andy simultaneously stuck his thumb into the cougar's eye and his pocket knife into its skull. The pocket knife blade closed on Andy's fingers during previous attempts to stab the cougar. After the cougar released him, he managed to run back down the trail and get help. A 13 year old boy was attacked by a small cougar. The boy held the cat by its neck with all his strength for about 12 minutes. By doing this, he didn't get bit, only scratched. His uncle shot twice at the cougar with a pistol, but missed. The gunshots did scare it away, though. Randy Kirshen was installing tile when a rabid cougar pounced on him, knocking him on his back and biting his arm. Randy threw it at a tree, but it ran right back and jumped on him again. Randy then kicked it as hard as he could in the chest and face, but this had no effect. A nearby UPS driver intervened and hit the 91 pound cougar in the face with a piece of pallet, which caused it to stop attacking. Pike Carlson was attacked by a 65 pound cougar. He was trying to fight it off by both punching it and trying to poke it in the eye with a stick. Neither worked. The cougar grabbed Pike by the head and was dragging him away and only stopped attacking when Pike's father ran over to them and scared the cat away. Paul John Shallow was attacked by a rabid cougar that scratched his back and was biting at his head. His uncle fired a warning shot, which only caused the cougar to back up a little. When the cougar stepped back forward, he fired again, killing it. A cougar pounced on a woman and her husband stopped the attack by stabbing the cougar multiple times with a boar spear. The cougar was later found dead a short distance away. Gary Camacho was attacked by an African lion. It bit his leg and didn't let go until Gary pressed his thumb on its eye with all of his might. Travis Kaufman was attacked by a 35 to 40 pound cougar. When it leapt on him, they rolled into a gully where Travis ended up on top of the cougar. The cat had his wrist in its jaws and did not release even when Travis hit the cat with a rock. He managed to pin the cat's hind legs with his left leg and used his right leg to put pressure on the cat's throat and suffocate it. Travis is 5 foot 10 and 150 pounds. The cat was 3 to 4 months old and still technically a kitten. Travis was 3 times the cat's weight and was strong enough to overpower it. A five foot tall grandmother killed an 120 pound cougar that attacked an 18 month old child. She stabbed the cougar with a butcher knife, twisted the knife, and the cat went limp. She had stabbed it right under its shoulder, into its heart. 
She kept stabbing it, even though it went limp, just in case it was still alive. A 60-pound cougar pounced on Kathleen Strell. Chuck Strell and Troy Winslow wrestled the cat off of her and held it down while Robin Winslow stabbed it to death with a double-tipped, 12-inch serrated kitchen knife. Robin Winslow noted that the cat's skin was difficult to cut. It's tough, like shark. Lily Kryzanovsky was attacked. Aleski Asapenko scared the cougar away when he approached. Aleski said, I saw the cougar grab the girl by her head and just dragging her into the woods. The cougar was a juvenile. While mountain biking with Debbie Nichols, Ann Hygel was pounced on by a 122-pound cougar. It clamped its jaws on her head and was unfazed from Ann's punches or the bike that Debbie threw at it. It only let go when other bikers showed up and started throwing softball-sized rocks at it. Erin Wilson was pounced on by a mountain lion while walking. She screamed for her Belgian Malinois dog, Ava. When Ava charged at the cat, the cougar clamped its jaws on the dog's skull and wouldn't let go. Aaron tried throwing rocks at the cougar and gouging its eyes, but nothing worked. Aaron then got a crowbar from her truck and flagged down a passing motorist, Sharon Houston. Sharon grabbed a PVC pipe, and together they beat the cougar until it let Ava go. An 80-pound cougar pounced on 5-foot, 6-inch tall Phil Anderson while he was mountain biking. Once the cat pounced, Phil immediately wrapped his legs around the cat's waist and spread its front legs with his forearms. He couldn't wrap his legs all the way around its muscular throat to choke it out, though. It only got to the verge of unconsciousness, and by then Phil's muscles were tired. So Phil released the cat and shoved it away, which clawed them as they separated. Phil noted that the cat was much stronger than an 80-pound German Shepherd he previously tried the same technique on. Isaac Saderbaum and Sonia Brooks were mountain biking when they saw that a cougar was following them. They got off their bikes and shouted at it, even hitting it with the bike when it charged, causing the 100-pound cougar to run off. Once they got back on their bikes, the cat came back and pounced on Isaac, biting and shaking his head. Sonia then ran, causing the cougar to drop Isaac. The cat then pounced on and killed Sonia before dragging her body back to its den. Isaac then managed to get on his bike and ride for two miles until he could get a cell phone signal to call 911. Sonia died because she ran, and Isaac lived because Sonia ran and the cougar was occupied with dragging off her body. We can see a trend in the survivor's stories. Generally, they are alive because someone intervened and hurt the cougar before it could kill its victim. I believe there are three factors keeping you alive. Having people or large dogs with you, being vigilant, and being armed. If the cougar is outnumbered, spotted early, and has a gun trained on it, you have a very good chance of walking out alive. Obviously, shooting a cougar before it pounces is the best outcome. If you can't shoot it in time, you'll get knocked over when it pounces on you. Generally, people either get knocked face down or onto their back. If you get knocked face down, it was likely because of the fact that cougars are stealthy and like to attack from behind. You'll likely have its jaws clamped on your neck or head. In this scenario, you only have a general idea of where the cat's head and neck is. The best tool for this job is a large knife, which you'll use to stab the cougar in the neck and eyes. A good knife for this job has a cross guard, a tanto tip, and a 12 inch or longer fixed blade. If you don't have a knife, you can try gouging its eyes. By the way, it would be very difficult and dangerous to try and shoot a cougar off yourself from this position. If you get knocked on your back, it's likely because you saw or heard the cougar before it pounced. You might be able to punch it or kick it a few times, but it will eventually get a hold of one of your limbs if no one intervenes. It's likely that it will end up on top of you with an arm in its mouth. Frankly, it's better that it bites an arm than your neck. It's important that you pull your knees up to your chest before it disembowels you with its back claws. 
From this position, you can stab it in the neck or eyes, or you might be able to draw a handgun with your non-mauled hand and shoot it in the chest. If you have the misfortune of being both unarmed and alone, your options are very limited. If the cougar is small enough, roughly a third of your body weight, you may be able to out-wrestle it and choke it to death. This will only work on young cougars and emaciated adults. A healthy adult cougar is just too strong for most people to wrestle. If you are somehow still standing, you may be able to kick the cougar down and step on its throat, but this is frankly unlikely. Generally, I think that an unarmed person would have the best chance of survival if they gouged the cougar's eyes with their keys or their fingers. The standard advice that is given does not prepare people for an actual attack. Notice how this does not mention using any actual weapons, like guns or knives, to stop an attack. Instead, it mentions that you can stop an attack with a hat, which is just ridiculous. Advice like fight back with sticks and rocks is not helpful because sticks and rocks are generally not going to stop an attack. Punching and kicking will not stop a cougar attack. Even if you pick up a cougar and throw it at a tree, that won't stop it. To actually stop an attack, you need to do serious damage. Cougars are naturally stealthy and are supposed to be afraid of humans. So when a cougar is walking towards you or stalking you, something has fundamentally changed. That cougar sees you as prey now. This is why the standard things like eye contact and making noise can only momentarily deter a serious attack. There is a common misconception that you should fight back specifically to convince the cougar that you're not prey. Simply fighting back more often than not does not stop the attack, as we've seen from the survivor's stories. When there is a cougar stalking you, that cat has shown the intent to kill you. If you only hit or bear spray that cougar and it runs off, you've bought time instead of stopping the threat. The problem here is that the cougar can wait for the best opportunity to attack again, as we've seen the attack on Isaac Saderbaum and Sonia Brooks. Of course, it goes without saying that you should never turn your back or run from a cougar. Also, many people have survived cougar attacks. This is a list of verified attacks in the state of California. 